Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lisa Matson. I'm the marketing director at Jordan, and I am thrilled to be kicking off this virtual tasting experience that explores one of my favorite food and wine pairings, wine and caviar. And uh, tonight it's going to be hosted by um, a few of my favorite tastemakers in Sonoma County. So we'll start with Todd and Nitsanol, the dynamic duo behind the Jordan Culinary Program. Todd's our executive chef. Hello. And, <laughs> and Nitsa is our director of hospitality and events. Happy and, Valentine's. <laughs> and they are joined by the fabulous and always fun Leslie Sabraco. You may know Leslie as the host of Check Please Bay Area on KQED. She's also the host of a new program on PBS called 100 Days, drinks, dishes, and destinations. You got it. Woohoo! <laughs> I got it. <laughs> it's a mouthful. You can find that, that new program on 300 different PBS stations across the United States and Canada. So please check that out. Um, now, before we get started and I turn it over to the hosts, I wanted to share a little bit about kind of uh, what we have in store for you tonight. So let's start with um, the wines and the caviar. So I know that some of you um, are enjoying this product through our new offer called the um, Tsar Nikolai Wine and Caviar Sampler that features the um, Jordan's Chef Reserve Caviar that we'll be starting with, as well as some uh, Gourmet Rose. And then the wines that we um, selected are the 2014 uh, Jordan Chardonnay, the 2014 Jordan Cabernet. And if you're in California, you may also have the uh, Jordan Cuvée, which we can only ship um, within the state of California. But I know many of you around the country have also bootlegged that back to um, your home. So you may have that in your glass. But of course, this is all about the more the merrier. And um, you may not, maybe you haven't bought the champagne and caviar set yet, because, or excuse me, the, the caviar and uh, gourmet roast set yet, because you want to give it a try tonight and see what you think, learn more about the products. Maybe you have another Jordan vintage in your glass or another, even another wine. That's okay. Um, the more the merrier. And uh, maybe you're just ready to kick off the weekend. Maybe you want to make your friends jealous. Maybe show them what you're doing or get them to join in right now. We are broadcasting live on Facebook. So you can send them over to um, Jordan Winery's Facebook page so they can see you. So send them a text, get them to join into the fun. Um, so in terms of how we're going to taste through um, everything tonight is we're going to start off with champagne and the Chardonnay before we move into the cab. And then we've already picked out with the chef some different pairings that we want to try. And we'll do Q&A with each pairing um, before we go back and taste everything and then do um, all questions then. So you can leave any questions in the Q&A. We'll pause for that after each pairing. And then, of course, we always encourage everybody to um, have your comments throughout with the chat, talk with others, have a great time. So, um, and then um, don't jump off at the end because before we say goodbye, I wanna make sure to share with everyone a little bit of information about what's happening at the winery, how all the things we've been doing to get ready for our reopening and then share with you um, the save the date for our March um, food and wine uh, virtual tasting. So. Without further ado, maybe I'll, I will. Uh, we'll start off with a toast, Leslie, to turn it over to you. How's that? There sound? we go. Well, hell, cheers to everybody. Sante, cheers. I've got my big glass out, by the way. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you the <laughs> this is my glass that that you know is as large as my face. My my glass the size of my head, and um, that's got some beautiful champagne in it. So, I wanted to just really get everybody in the spirit of not only Valentine's Day, um, but you know, just enjoying the fact that we're talking about really one of the sexiest pairings in the world, you've got to admit. I mean, you know, wine and caviar is, there is nothing better than wine and caviar when it comes to this sexy quotient and, and the sultry and the smooth and the amazing. I call it sort of the marriage of complexity and class, right? Mm -hmm. And so between the classy wines of Jordan and the gorgeous just caviars of Tsar Nikolai, we're going to have an exploration. And even if you don't have that in your, uh, if you don't have Jordan in your glass right now, or uh, I gotta put that down, it's so heavy, um, or <laughs> you don't have the, the Tsar Nikolai caviars, that's all right. You can still learn, ask questions, explore later. But in the meantime, I want to kick off with, we, we do have a beautiful couple here, <laughs> Todd and Nisa. <laughs> and you. and ask you. you, before we start digging into the wines and the caviar and the pairings and our background with, with both of those companies, um, 
Tell me what you think is so special about that pairing of wine and caviar, because, you know, vodka is certainly known as a pairing for caviar. In fact, if you go up to Tsar Nikolai, the moment you arrive at the farm, you are handed a shot of vodka and, uh, you know, a little spoonful of caviar. So before we get to the wine, but what makes wine and caviar such a special thing to you, Todd and Itza? Well, I mean, it's been around forever and it's been, it's, that's what luxury has been for in the food world forever, that and truffles, I would, I would assume. Mm -hmm. The vodka pairing is excellent. It does have some history behind it, but the champagne pairing or the wine pairing are, are really my favorite because, because then you have a contrast and then you're really showing your wines off. And uh, that creaminess, that nuttiness of a caviar with the uh, salinity and, and the citrus of our, of our wine, that's a perfect pairing, so. And I think what we're going to be doing today is really fun because, you know, people think champagne, okay? If they don't think vodka, they think champagne for pairing with caviar and rose because we have uh, caviar and rose today. But we're doing Chardonnay and we're even doing <gasps> Cabernet Sauvignon, <laughs> red wine, right? With caviar. Um, and so we're going to see how that interplay really happens and why it makes such beautiful magic. And so Lisa, what do you think you know, if you can kind of sum up um, what makes wine and caviar such a, an incredible pairing to you, what would it be? I think it's really that kind of indulgent richness um, that caviar brings. And then when you have beautiful acidity in the wine, just the way those two things play together, that contrast that Todd was talking about is just so lovely. And it's just like this, you know, indulgence, you know, it's, it's sort of like when people say, oh, you you pop a bottle of uh, champagne and you just feel like it's a celebration. I feel yeah. like when you pop a bottle of champagne or you open a, a bottle of wine and then you pop that little on the, the jar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a part. That's a part right? I'm getting so excited. <laughs> things combined. And so um, that's been a real treat for me, um, having this new collaboration at Jordan and that Todd and Zar Nikolai created, and then to be able to now have caviar more often because, hey, it's my job. It's a dirty job. But somebody's got to do it. Right. Uh, so that's been, that's been really, really lovely to have an opportunity to try these products together and have that indulgence that's so lovely. And, and I've found that now I do that on my own too at home because I've found the accessibility of the price of the Zar Nikolai products because it's yeah. every from high-end caviar to a gourmet row that's much more accessible. That's right. And, and you have a rich history, don't you, Todd, with Tsar Nikolai in terms of, of you know, creating things with them. Tell us a little bit about that history because I, I was just at the farm, as I mentioned briefly, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. And I know you are, are going there as well. It really is a special place, a special company and really glorious, glorious American caviar. So, you know, give us a little of your background with them. I first uh, was involved with Tsar Nikolai Caviar when I was a cook at the Ritz Carlton a hundred years ago. So the company has <laughs> been around since I think 1984. So I've gone from sneaking a spoon onto my bagel in the morning to uh, designing, he used to show up in front of me. To designing, to designing my own. And when when I when I ran into Otto again, Otto from from the caviar company, and we saw this opportunity to actually collaborate and have something to actually do with the process. I mean that that's a dream for a chef, really. And, and we will be sort of tasting that process, won't, won't we? That collaboration and that process as we move forward. So um, I know everybody wants to get into their caviar and into their, into their wine. So what I'd like to do is start out first with our you know, first pairing, really. It'll be our first two caviars, but because they'll both be with the same wines. But I wanna talk about the Champagne and the Chardonnay. Those are the two things we're gonna start pairing right now. And again, if those of us, those of you who are joining us don't have them in your glass, it's all right. Uh, I'm sure you have something wonderful in your glass and um, you can, you know, you can certainly ask questions and, and join in the fun and listen and learn anyway. So we're gonna start out with the Champagne. I'm gonna get rid of my big glass over here <laughs> and uh, pull out a reasonable sized glass so that I can actually <laughs> drink from it. Um, and we'll kick off, and I'd like to get all of your thoughts there with um, your gorgeous Jordan Cuvée. 
And for those who um, don't have a chance ha or haven't had a chance to taste this, it's really a stunning collaboration. I'm gonna let Lisa talk a little bit about this, but um, the AR, a Lenoble, a, a really a, a, a historic, back to 1920, um, a champagne house. And this is your collaboration because Jordan has always been about hospitality and bubbles, right? A glass of champagne, I think, you know, I haven't been going there since the 70s, but, but you know, has always been a part of the experience at Jordan. So talk a little bit about this collaboration because this is such a gorgeous champagne. The yes. Jordan Bouvet. So um, back when uh, Jordan opened its uh, doors, if you will, in um, late 1979 uh, for the release of this 1976 vintage of Cabernet, um, which was released in 1980, still four years after the, the harvest of the wine. They, of course, wanted to greet guests. It's all about the hospitality, the food and the wine, enjoying that together. And they wanted to greet guests with champagne. So it did start with a uh, true champagne from France. They also even served, I believe, Iron Horse sometime as the uh, California sparkling was just starting to take off in the 1980s. And then um, they decided to make their own sparkling wine um, and made J by Jordan at Jordan for many years um, until the mid 90s, until Judy Jordan, um, the daughter, of the founders decided to make that her own. And she ran that company very successfully for many years. It was our sister house. We always served Jay. And then she decided to make a lifestyle change and uh, sell the winery. And we just didn't want that connection to end. So Rob Davis, our first um, winemaker who just retired in um, 2019, he went and talked to a friend in Paris who owns a wine bar there who worked the harvest in 1980 at Jordan. Um, and said, do you know anybody in Champagne that has the similar values of Jordan, you know, balance, elegance, just beautifully classy, high quality, well-made wine, small producer, family owned. And he said, I'm just the person. And he picked up the phone um, and called um, Anne and Antoine, uh, the, the um, brother sister team at AR Lenoble. They've never done anything like this, but they said, hey, let's talk. Rob got on the train, met them the next day and the rest is history. So um, we just picked their favorite, Rob picked his favorite wine from what they make. This is their non-vintage. And, and it's, they, a, it's a blend of Chardonnay, of Pinot Noir, of Pinot Meunier. So yes, there's three great varieties have, of champagne. Yeah, <laughs> a blend of champagne, non-vintage. Um, and what's special about this wine is that they have uh, many Grand Cru vineyards, the top level of quality in champagne. Um, that they own in the Côte de Blanc, which is known for its Chardonnay. And so this has 25% Grand Cru fruit, oh, well. non-vintage. Right. Um, also has about 30% Premier Cru, the next level of Pinot Meunier, or excuse me, Pinot Noir, also from their own vineyards. And then they're in a village that is known for its Pinot Meunier. So for mm -hmm. the third grade, they have the balance is Pinot Meunier. They age their wine four years on the lees. So just like these wines, this is a base vintage 2014. So that's also kind of fun for tonight, even though it's a non-vintage, meaning it's a blend, most of the wine is from 2014. And it gives you, I think because of that, um, that preponderance of Pinot Meunier, you get this just friendly fleshiness, but that Chardonnay, that Grand Cru Chardonnay gives you this streak of acidity that just makes your toes tingle and makes you sit up straight, you know, <laughs> and begs for some caviar. I'm leading into caviar, can you tell? Um, <laughs> So, so it makes really the perfect pairing for caviar. Um, the perfect pairing for just about anything from a bathtub to caviar to <laughs> Valentine's Day. Um, so so give me your impressions, uh, oh, culinary superstar duo there. Uh, the pairing or the, the caviar itself? Just the, just the champagne, because we're going to talk about the champagne. Oh. And then we're not even on the pairing yet. Just hang, but, we're, well, we're doing the, the wine. The champagne's wonderful, and I mean, when we talk about the pairing too, there that being on the lees and that that flavor. I mean, we're looking at brioche, and what's better with caviar than brioche? So there's also that 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 was wonderful to find in the champagne, and fun to work with as a chef. I'm sure. Yes, I love that complexity. And do you find that people love this, Nitsa, when you pour oh, it? Oh gosh, but, you know, champagne's just the way to start the day. <laughs> Maybe not every day, but maybe Sunday brunch. Um, oh, champagne! You know, I, 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 I believe champagne goes so well with everything, but caviar, it really, like Lisa was saying, it just, it's, it just is a celebration. It's so exciting. So I'm so excited to dig in. Well, I want. I know we're going to get to the Jordan Reserve caviar. I mean, um, uh, the 
caviar, but I want to talk a little bit about the Chardonnay first, because we're pairing both those wines with both of the first two caviars. So, you know, really, let's talk about this iconic Chardonnay, because your Chardonnay, um, to me, of course, has this French, uh, French style inspired elegance. That's what you're known for, this beautiful capturing of, of Russian River vibrancy, the fruit and the freshness. Um, so, you know, it also makes an amazing pairing for caviar. Um, Lisa, talk a little bit about the wine and then, and then maybe Todd and Nitsa can tell us a little bit about their, their fun of getting to play with this wine and pair it all day long. Yeah, absolutely. So the 2014 Chardonnay, we decided to pick an older vintage just to show everyone how well this wine can evolve and age. Um, like Leslie said, when, when you when you taste a Jordan Chardonnay when it's young, you know, it's extremely vibrant, um, very fresh, very fruit forward. The oak is more of a just a back end, very, very subtle. Um, and this vintage, when it came out, it had this like lemon curd, citrus, Meyer lemon, in your face, uh, pears, very succulent, very racy. Um, and it's just interesting to see how it evolved because 2014 was a vintage where it was the, um, we call it the Holy Trinity, um, 2012, 2013, 2014. They were all three drought years. This was kind of the end of the drought, if you will. And it just created that lack of water, just such a fruit intensity in the wine. And so it's really interesting to see how this wine um, has evolved because it still tastes very, very young. Um, but you but I, think, I think it's got, again, this, this palette, this mid palette uh, expansion that's happened since I first tasted this wine a number of years ago is really incredible to see how it's, how it's become, I think, a little bit more opulent. Don't you think, mm -hmm. Todd? Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I like that. I like you working with the older ones with the caviar because uh, while we still have the acidity that she was talking about and that citrus, which is great to work with as a chef, uh, when you have too much acidity, it's gonna bring that salt up in the caviar. So rather than doing its job, we're, we get into competition. So, so I think this, this pairing is one of my favorites. All right, so we have the two, we have the great champagne, the Jordan Cuvée. We have the 2014 Chardonnay. So let's dig into the caviar. So those of you who don't have the caviar, I'm so sorry, but we're gonna be loving <laughs> life and just a bite here. So um, tell us a little bit about the first pairing, Todd, which is going to be, and I popped the top here. Actually, it sort of popped it on its own. I could hear them popping back here, the little tops. This <laughs> is the Jordan uh, Chef's Reserve right mm -hmm. here. Uh, Zar Nikolai Caviar. And let's talk a little bit about that one first and pair it with both these wines. Sure. Um, well, to go to the caviar, uh, this was our my first uh, collaboration with Zar Nikolai. Um, we may be doing another one in the, in the future, but uh, it was created by me knowing that the, the salt from the ocean was so, I love using the, the ocean uh, being so near to us and the kombu and so I figured if we get that umami flavor into the salt, that little bit of salt that goes in the caviar and bring some character of Sonoma to it, then we'd have something. So we bring the salt down that goes into, that cures the caviar with the kombu very slowly. And then we uh, salt it mal salt, which means very little salt. So it's just enough to set it. I'll tell you, when you eat this, it is like little, you know, pillows of love. <laughs> They just mm -hmm. sort of the silkiness and the, the you know, minute salinity to this. It is not salty mm -hmm. in any way, shape and form. It just has a salinity that that is so appealing. But the creaminess, oh, la, la. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying it first with the with the champagne. Mm -hmm. Very seamless. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And I'm hoping that people who have this at home and are tasting along with us will also put some Q and A's in or um, we'll be answering those questions in just a second once we can actually get past our little heaven, piece of heaven here that <laughs> a bite of this, uh, the chef's reserve. Now I wanna try it with the um, Chardonnay too. Talk about that first pairing though, the champagne. Is there, is there something that stands out? Is there something really special about that one? Because to me, it made the champagne seem a little more taut, to be honest. It made the champagne seem a little leaner, which I love. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't that's, know if that was that's the that. sauciness of it. Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that fat, that unctuousness in the caviar, that, that roundness is going to change the wine, definitely, which is really interesting. And, 
that's that's what wine pairing is fun, you know, back and forth. Yeah, what do you think, Lisa? And that first pairing with the champagne, it, it to me it made the champagne seem a little bit more minerally and lean mm -hmm. than than it tasted initially. I agree, but then when you use a little bit of the Bellini that also comes in the sampler, that then brought out that richness in the champagne that Todd was talking about, almost like that brioche, mm -hmm. toasty kind of bread-like qualities. It was really interesting. Right. I'm just going straight. I'm doing just the straight old, yeah, that's the best yeah. straight old caviar. I'm not mucking around with anything else here. <laughs> I'm just doing this. All right. So um, now we're going to go in for the Chardonnay, right? Mm. And again, there's an, a, a slight earthiness to this, but there's almost a, a little whisper of sweetness to the caviar. Just the texture is what is so incredibly appealing to this. And, and reserve caviar is very, very special, you know? So, okay. Yes, you just let, you break those, those little fine beads with your tongue rather than biting into them. So that's where your taste buds are, not in your teeth. So it's so soft and the, the texture is so perfect and you just break it in your mouth. It is glorious. And I'll be honest with you, I think I like it a little bit better with the Chardonnay. Yeah, I agree. Um, only because, I, I mean, they're both beautiful pairings, but I am I feel like I'm matching the textural component a little mm -hmm. bit more. The, the opulence of the way this 2014 is expressing itself to me is a little bit better match for the opulence and, um, and you know, velvety, silky texture of the caviar, no? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. You know, Every oh, answer is a right you. answer, by the way, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. <laughs> no, but you're right, champagne's going to be racier, and you have a more contrasting, and this one's, this one's bringing them together. More rounded, so we have, yeah, okay. yeah, more of a compliment. More rounded, do you like this one? Lisa, mm -hmm. what about you? I know I'm catching you mid-chew there. Yes. Um, I had a similar... Um, experiences the repressions like impressions like I had with the champagne where it was like when I have it alone um it was really interesting to see what it did texturally like you're saying but then when I added in the um Bellini um with the Chardonnay it was another interesting thing about another it. interesting layer and that's what I think back to that initial question I asked you all about you know what is such a, a unique and special thing about pairing wine and caviar and it is that la those layers of complexity that it just changes with each bite you know and and you know there's there's you only need small amounts of such an intense intensely beautiful food that and but it changes the wine and changes the food so so um uh, really strongly i think that there's a, quite a change pretty quickly all right do we have any questions on this first pairing lisa um, we do have one question and also um a comment um jolene um mason reynolds want to say oh she doesn't have the jordan cuvee but when she tasted with the chardonnay she even got a little bit of like a, a sweetness of the caviar that came out mm -hmm. I think so. I agree with her totally. Yeah. I think it came out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know what that would be, Todd, in terms of of you know the what you did. It, you didn't really do anything with the caviar. I'm not saying you did anything, um, but you know, is it that the the creaminess that's matching yeah. the creaminess there and bringing out the sweetness it, of the of yeah, the, wine? the the fat and the salt in reaction to the acidity of that lemon citrusy and uh, and minerality as well. So you have a background of that. Right. And then that creaminess in the fork. Well, that those that's a, a, a great way to start, let me just say. So uh, I, I'm ready for a wonderful weekend, but we have more. <laughs> we have more. So let's move on to the next pairing. All right, Les, we do have to, uh, yeah. two, two questions. Sure. Absolutely. The first question uh, is for Todd was about like, how is caviar actually made um, in general? What are the ingredients? And then um, the next question was about if people have caviar at home, but they don't have these, the little bellinis, the little um, breads, like what else do you recommend if they want to put it on something? Potato chip. Yes. Sorry. Actually, a potato chip is wonderful. We just- I'm we stealing just, the thunder, potato chip. <laughs> <laughs> we just did that the other day. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite um, way, I, potato I love, chip. I love plain white toast. I love brioche. Brioche is probably my favorite, depending upon the wine. Um, and that's about it. Maybe some creme fraiche because it's good caviar and I'm not trying to mask the caviar. I think that's what a lot of those accoutrements are for, is that old fishy caviar <laughs> that we used right. to get at the grocery store. The creme fraiche make, just kind yeah. of gives it a little more mm -hmm. Or you could just put a little bit right there and... Exactly. Oh, that's the there you go. <laughs> that's the key leverage. 
I'll be doing those bumps in just a second. So, um, Todd, maybe uh, you know answering that question about the caviar preparation. Yeah. So it's actually surprisingly simple. Uh, I went uh, to the factory myself and uh, made the caviar. You, you, they're brought in from Wilton from the farm, the egg sacks themselves, and we we sieve them out over this this uh, wide mesh, and then it's 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 grated, and then at that point we just add. Uh, just beneath three and a half, three point five percent salt, and then six weeks later, caviar. That's it's it. Very, very simple. And when you said grated, it's grated with a D, not grated with a T. So yes. just yes. so grated in terms grated. of quality. Grated in terms of quality, absolutely. And I had a chance, as I said, to go to the farm and see actually the farm raised sturgeon. And those sturgeon are the most incredible fish. You can't believe it. They're like five feet long, hundreds and hundreds of pounds, eight years old. You know, just it, it's really magnificent to see, uh, you know, to see nature at its best there when, you know, when they're really doing farm, farm fresh. Um, sturgeon. This is 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 such a beautiful um, process, really, because it's so simple. Prehistoric. <laughs> All right. So now we're we're going to the next pairing. Same two wines. So if you have a champagne or a sparkling, anybody with you, um, and and the Chardonnay, uh, beautiful. We're staying with those two wines for the um, ginger whitefish roe, and again the roe. Um, you know, we could talk about the difference between caviar and roe. If you want to do that, I mean, it's just a terminology, I guess. <laughs> right? I need for Todd to let them know about you know the, which fish you can only make caviar from versus a gourmet roe. Right. Oh me? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can answer it too if you if you don't want to answer it and you're eating. Don't worry. <laughs> caviar light champagne. I mean caviar caviar must be made by the surgeon. And uh, they use the American surgeon, which is the, one of the trans Montana uh, mm -hmm. surgeons. US, American surgeon, which used to be a big business uh, in the third century. Right, it did. And you know, 18, 1880s, I think there was a big business in caviar, uh, okay. American caviar. Mm -hmm. um, and it says, depending on country, caviar can be used to describe um, roe, but roe such as salmon, steelhead, trout, lumpfish, whitefish, carp, roes would be those other fish, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, not the sturgeon. Okay, so this is a beautiful looking roe. Um, and this is a whitefish roe, but ginger, it's got a, an, a little ginger infusion, a little touch. Let's see. Mm. I am a ginger fanatic. I eat ginger every day. I am a ginger lover. And this is very gingery, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> it's got a nice ginger hit, doesn't it? Yeah, but they, they found a balance. It's not overpowering. It's not hot. No, it's not. Yeah, it's nice. Well, it's Hawaiian ginger. It's my home. <laughs> I love ginger. I love ginger too. I, love you. I could eat ginger every single day. I love it. I do. I literally get, I, I have ginger and I eat it every day. The raw ginger, you know, just the root or the, I, I, you know, whenever I get sushi, I say, can you put a whole bunch of extra ginger oh, yeah. in there my and son. I eat it yeah. every day? That's my guilty pleasure is having the pickled ginger in the fridge. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All right, we tried, I tried it with the champagne and I'll get your thoughts. I know we're all, we're all working on it here, but you can see the beauty of this. I mean, there is that, that lovely little color, um, that little spiciness that comes from the ginger, that little warmth on the palate. Um, it's not quite as creamy as the reserve. I don't get quite the creaminess. Mm, it's a little bit, a little bit more crispy, <laughs> a little more crunchy. Um, good with the Chardonnay, but I have to say, I'm going to flip back and go with the Champagne as my, as my choice with it. They're, they're both beautiful with it. But for me, the Champagne, really that little bit makes the Champagne seem a bit more exotic in its fruit quality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the spiciness of the ginger, and you get a little bit more, a little bit more Valentine's Day heat with, uh, <laughs> it with the Champagne. <laughs> now that's a sexy pairing. I'm just saying right now. <laughs> Lisa, what do you think? I really like how the um, ginger brings out like the little, the like, you know, this salinity, like a little bit of the saltiness in the champagne, like you're saying, um, a little exotic. 
And um, this has always been our favorite pairing with the ginger has been the champagne. And then Chardonnay is usually second um, regardless of vintage. And we have, a, we have a blog post at Wine Country Table where we actually pair these different gourmet rogues with different wines. It's an exercise we've done with um, our winemaker and with the chef. And so that was kind of the idea behind this tasting was well, let's see what these other vintages taste like like them in the past with these rows. So I, I think I prefer the champagne too, although it is, it is very interesting with the, with the Chardonnay. It is, it is. And it's a pairing that I would, I would drink and enjoy and love, but you know, if I have to give the edge to the champagne, I would, I think that that one, you know, front turns one plus one to three, right? <laughs> All right, we'll give them that one. Yeah, it's a going on. And Nisa, do you agree? What, where are you on this? Where are you standing? I agree with you. I really love the champagne with that. That I'm going for more. That's exactly. That's, that's, <laughs> I agree with you. That's what I. Well, you know what we the are. Chardonnay, now, the Chardonnay was so great with the reserve. I really love the Chardonnay with the reserve. Oh, so much. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And Lisa, do we have any questions before we kind of move on to our comments? Before we move on to to starting to introduce the Cabernet Sauvignon and. Yeah, I, I, we don't have any questions on this particular pairing yet, unless anybody wants to chime in. But uh, Carrie did say after we were talking about, you know, what other accoutrements can you have with uh, caviar? She said for her, she loves to take little um, small roasted baby potatoes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's an awesome one. Are on just a drop of the creme fraiche and that's her her go-to which that's I oh one. that's a great one that's a great one too we yeah forgot about that <laughs> but you need the creme fraiche to me when you have the little baby potato I think you need yes. the oh fresh. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh -huh. or a drop of olive oil or, or Jordan olive oil, yes, you're right. Or, or Jordan olive oil, which is, I, I was at the dregs of my Jordan olive oil, can't hit, oh, no. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, Jordan olive oil is amazing. <laughs> and the salt, the, the Jordan salt is incredible. Um, all right, so keep those questions coming and thoughts and comments, anything, you know, in, in general. It doesn't have to be about caviar either. We've got an amazing chef in our midst here uh, with Chef Todd, so, you know, make sure that you, you, you chime in and ask some questions um, because when you visit Jordan, and we'll talk about that, I know Lisa at the end about some, you know, what's happening in terms of, of live experiences and things like that. Um, it is one of the, the best places in wine country, and I mean worldwide wine country, to go and experience wine and food. And that's because you have such a devotion to the culinary aspect of wine. And, um, and I have had so many amazing experiences there. Uh, thank you to everybody on the screen here because it's, it, it truly is one of those spots where, where you know, you're transported to another place, to France, to, to wherever you wanna be at with, the, with your beautiful dishes. So please chime in with questions on that as well. Um, all right, so we are moving. Now, we, now we're getting a little racy, aren't we? We're getting a little racy by introducing um, a Cabernet Sauvignon. And again, this is, you know, this is the big, what? Caviar and red wine, what? Yeah. Um, so we're hanging on for Chardonnay. We're going to just push back, not get rid of, certainly, um, our champagne glass right now. We're gonna bring back, for those of you who are just joining us, um, we have got the beautiful Jordan 2014 Chardonnay, Russian River Valley, Sonoma County, of course, a uh, little aged Chardonnay. We've got, now we're introducing, sticking with the 2014 vintage, the Cabernet Sauvignon, your flagship iconic wine from Jordan, and um, a little bit of age on it as well. And this is from Alexander Valley. Uh, just really one of the, um, most stylish and again, elegant and complex wines that I think California produces. You guys, this is really um, such a, a beautiful marriage of, of old world elegance and new world character. And so we're gonna see how that plays in the sandbox with some caviar here. So let's talk a little bit, Lisa, about this wine first. All right, so another 2014, like I mentioned, um, really a excellent growing season. Um, you know, the only real problem or challenge with 2014 was how did the winemakers make sure that when a drought year, they conserved water because that was so important, but also making sure that the vines got the water they needed at the right time. So we used many different technologies, including little transfer, evapotranspiration emitters that would like 
be up in the air and bring in moisture levels is like fascinating to let was the first time we did that experiment to try to make sure we're only giving the vines water when they absolutely need it. Mm-hmm. And then what happened is that that struggle that the vines had um, really produced these intense fruit. And when the 2014 Cabernet came out a few years ago, it was all about the black fruit. It was black cherries, black berries. And this is also our last vintage that had American oak in it. It's only four, let's see, yeah, about 4% American oak, like not very much at all um, and also used, but you know, so because there was so much French oak in this wine, you're really getting the silkiness of the tannins and 2014 already had like really pronounced beautiful natural tannins. So it's a wine that's gonna age um, extremely well. And I haven't tried this um, since last summer. I think we were, were we serving this at Paris on the Terrace um, as one of the older wines or no, that was the 2010. I, haven't- I think it was the 2010 when I went last summer. Yeah. yeah. So for me, this will be my first, uh, you know, scent, and it, there's still a lot of black fruit. I mean, it, it oh. seems so. Um, it is, and that that beautiful little cracked back black pepper, and a little bit of even sort of green pepper. You know, that kind of quality. Um, do, what what do uh, you think, Todd and Nitza, for this wine? Well, it, the uh, you know, I, if you think of it as a as a, a seafood product, even though it comes from fresh water. Um, but it has that that flavor to it and richness. Oh wait, we're Isn't on the re- we're on the wine. You're jumping to the caviar oh. right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. You gotta oh, you gotta there. poke him. You gotta poke him, Nitsa, and keep him on track here. He keeps <laughs> wanting to get to the caviar. <laughs> we we want to drink. We, we want to drink the wine. He wants to get to the caviar. <laughs> Um, so you, I mean, you must have such fun again, playing with this wine, getting to pair this wine, getting to come up with dishes that, that work with this wine. Give, give me your chef's take on this wine. Um, both, you know, both of you. Yeah, because you have the concentration, I I went very much, uh, when I work with this wine, I'm going to go darker fruit. I'm going to keep the, I'm going to keep the acid a little bit down. And, uh, I like, I love the concentration of it. So it, it's a great big, when I'm gonna, I'm gonna go big with a meal, this is the wine I like to back it up with. Well, and you say concentration, but to me, it, it there's no heaviness. There's no, there's never no. any weightiness with your, with Jordan's Cabernets. They're always light on their feet and, and have an ethereal quality that Cabernet doesn't often have, uh, especially big California Cabernet. So yes, there is intense fruit saturation, but it's still balanced with that, mm-hmm. that, you know, that, that elegance and that lightness and brightness. And Nitsa, what do you what do you think about the wine? Are you I totally agree. Well rounded, very it kind of, I don't want to say lighter, but it's kind of, you know, it's it it feels like it has the age on it. So I enjoy it because it's not so in your face, but you get the fruit and it's just beautiful, you know. And the tal- tannins are really polished. There's no exactly. rough edges. Definitely. I call I call I call tannins like this kitty tongue tannins. Oh, <laughs> they're, they're, you know, like when, a, when it, like when a little kitten, you know, licks your hand, right? It, it, and it feels so soft and wonderful, but there's just this little tiny mm, yeah. little grit, this little oh, kiss of grit. And but that's got kitty tongue tan inside. All right. Like so <laughs> now we can get, now Todd, the, let's go chef uh, Todd uh, here for the win, pairing this wonderful truffle whitefish. So about the cabernet. <laughs> 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 the, the truffle, truffle the truffle is wonderful it, 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 it it's bringing us out of the white even though you could do a you could do a clash pairing i do like it with the chardonnay but to bring cabernet you know red wine and fish you know the book um it can be done and with with this much flavor i think i think it can be pulled off and i'm telling you i i just opened the the tin and yeah. i went whoa you get about right. here before you're overwhelmed with the truffle it's really this gorgeous intense truffle character so i'm going to try it with because um talk about what you you know the chardonnay with it i'm going to try it first with the chardonnay mm. the beads are definitely give you a little bit more of that you know um sort of pearl like character um mm-hmm. Oh, I like it with the Chardonnay. I really do. I didn't think I would like it because the truffle is quite apparent. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe that it would it would you know mute the Chardonnay at all, but this Chardonnay it it, it even it, makes it seem more opulent. It pulls and then it pulls it off. It really cleans it cleanses the palate. Mm-hmm. For that this is really I, I'm this is a surprise for me. I thought this it intellectually I thought this is not going to work. 
<laughs> beautiful, right? Lisa? Yeah, it, it is lovely. I like how, because you've just got such a complexity and earthiness from the, the truffle. And then when you've got a, a, a little more richer, rounder body to the older Chardonnay, they really complement each other. Mm. Really, really, really nice. Does anybody have any questions before we move to the Cabernet in this one? We do um, have a few questions, um, a little more uh, general. So if anybody has questions specific to truffle uh, row, please um, hop in. Uh, Peter Rand asked, what else would you pair food-wise with caviar? You know, we've talked about the potatoes, um, but what other things, because um, there was another question that you might be able to answer at the same time as like a lot of people, what other person said, I see seafood with caviar on top. Like what other proteins can you do with caviar? So those kind of, both of those kind of go together. I've had some, I've had fun using vegetables actually. So um, roasted vegetables with the caviar or putting it in the sauce at the last moment to really spread that flavor and that richness. So if I put it into a little, uh, into a Blanc or something, then we're bringing it closer to, and you just get that, those little hits of, hits of richness and roundness. Hey, would you put it with mushrooms? Like, would you do a yeah, mushroom or a top? Yeah. Certain mushrooms, like a, like, my, my, it, like a Mayataki mushroom, something with a real pine and, and aroma, it's wonderful together. Yeah, this one is so, this truffle, I'm looking forward now to trying it with the Cabernet um, because, you know, this is where I can see you go, okay, you know, caviar with this truffly um, essence, this perfumed character of, of truffle. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we also had a question. Um, if you have any um, tips on picking out caviar at the grocery store, um, so I'd love to hear Leslie and um, Todd's thoughts on that. Um, I will say that. I, when I purchase Tsar Nikolai on a whim, cause it does happen. Like I'm gonna go to a friend's house, to the pool. What do you wanna bring for lunch? It's like stop at Whole Foods and pick up Tsar Nikolai, um, one of the caviars or the rose. They typically have both. Um, so grab that and hope they have, she's got the ice ready. <laughs> right. And I would say stick to a trusted retailer. If you're going to the grocery store, you're not, you know, be. Be aware of what grocery store you're going to, right? Is it an yeah, turnover? Is, <laughs> is it a Whole Foods? Is it a you know you want to you want to be about that in terms of that would be my number one tip. Yeah, <laughs> chef, what do you think? No, I agree. Uh, make sure it's on ice, not on the shelf, uh, right. and look look for a finer grocery store where there's going to be some turnover. So right. you've got a month in in the in those little little uh, jars. So. They say up to two sometimes, yeah. but you know, I mean. But I, you're, if you're at a good grocery store, you're going to be all right. You're going to have turnover, right? Oh, well, yeah. now pairing it with the Cabernet, the the truffle row. I this is glorious. This is really a moment where you, you know, even in food and wine pairing, and as much as we do in food and wine pairing, you still have those those you know truly magical moments like what just happened in my mouth right there. <laughs> <laughs> because that it to me the cabernet toned down the truffleness of the truffleiness mm. of that um of that caviar of that row it took it took it, it it muted it just a whisper and it brought out a little bit more of the structure of the cabernet so i i think it made them both so much um even though they're both beautiful both even better for mm -hmm. sure I personally, the first time I tried it was at our Christmas party. Otto had it set up at a table and I was running past and he said, come try this with the Cabernet. I said, no, Otto, I, I, I drink champagne. Like, but he goes, no, 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 I want you to try this. And so I tried it and I was like, oh my gosh, like all these things happened. <laughs> so it was pretty, it was pretty cool. It definitely does. It, it works for sure. They're very proud of that. That caviar. Yeah, yeah it's, you know right. what? And, and I would say stay away from a, a cat. You've got to have a, an elegant uh, aged cabernet like this, one that has again those polished tannins that that is that has saturated fruit but is not dense. A, a dense, very heavily tannic cabernet would not do it. It would destroy it. High and alcohol, same thing. If you have a really high alcohol cabernet, yeah, I think that, that would also overwhelm the um, right row. And would you think, because this one, again, has a little bit of age on it, the 2014, I've tasted older Jordans that, that you know, they age so beautifully. Um, 
do you think that age plays into this pairing? I think you can do it either way because I, I love to contrast. I mean, we can meld the flavors with the older or, or showcase, showcase the Chardonnay's acidity. So I can use it either way. All right. Well, then, with yeah. the depending on, yeah. This truffles a lot at the winery, even with the younger Jordan mm -hmm. Cabernet. And I think that if we were tasting the 16 or the 17 that's coming out later this year for the cab, I think you'd find that the fruit um, may be a little more, uh, might pop because of that earthiness contrast. Yeah. Right, Todd? yeah, you can pick that up even with the truffle. You could feel that fruit first and the truffle separate and then they kind of integrate together um, in the mouth. Beautiful. Well, um, before we move to the last two caviars, and we're going to stick with the Jordan Cabernet moving into the to the next um, pairing. Lisa, talk. Um, do we have any uh, questions? I saw a few pop up here. Let's let's yeah. talk a little bit about those. There are more comments. Um, Jolene was like, OK, we, we should probably recognize the fact that there are three C's in life and we have them all here and it's Cabernet, Chardonnay and caviar. So yeah. and champagne. <laughs> And champagne. Yeah. Horses, right? So cheers, yeah. cheers everyone to that. Cheers. Um, <laughs> and then also, um, you know, some comments about Cabernet and Rose and how interesting this pairing is. Another person said like Tsar Nikolai is really the only producer. It is the best producer, you know, that's sustainable. They were the first to focus on sustainable caviar making, yeah. row making in California in the eighties, like Todd said. Um, also, there was some comments about um, what Todd was saying about which seafoods as well as which vegetables. And someone was saying roasted cauliflower and morel. Yes. Yeah, that's like that's a cla yeah the, the cauliflower puree is excellent. With this. Yeah, and Todd does have a roasted ca um, cauliflower with caviar on our website recipe. If anybody wants to check that out, and uh, scallops too. Someone was saying mm -hmm. that they just love scallops with a little fresh and caviar on top, which I know I've seen. I photographed uh, dishes of Todd's with that as well. That was, that was the cool. ultimate bridging element. Yeah, yeah so I want to cook. Come visit. We got it. We got it. Well, your, your dishes are not only delicious, but they are um, Instagrammable. They're beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> They're, you, you know, you eat with your eyes, we always say. And so uh, you're certainly you're certainly a master at that. All right. Oh, so we are um, just hanging on to our Cabernet Sauvignon right now. And we're heading into the fourth um, pairing here. And this is going to be, I'm looking forward to this one as well. This is the saffron row. So we've got saffron beet row, and I'll, I have to show you the color so you can see the beets in there. So I'm, I'm thinking earth, man, give me some earthiness, give me some, right? And, um, and this is, I can't wait, with the Cabernet. So let's give it a go. Yeah, this, this is a, um, a product that the first time that I had it at the winery, I think Todd had it in the kitchen, was like, you have to try this. Mm -hmm. You know, we always knew that the truffle row was going to work with Cabernet because Chad uses truffles all the time in his recipes when pairing with Jordan Cabernet. But the beet um, was for me personally a real surprise the first time we tried it. Um, I tried it in the kitchen with Todd, Maggie, and we tried it with a 2005 um, library wine at the time. That was, you know, I don't know how many years ago, Todd, but I was just blown away. Yeah. <laughs> When it hits, it's a really, it's a, it's a good one. Well, the, the, row it's, the row itself to me, Todd, has this um, almost meaty umami sort of character to it, doesn't it? It's got yeah. this, the beet it really speaks it, but the beet is, makes it earthy. You're not getting any, to me, any sweetness here. The saffron and the beet mm -hmm. make it this really earthy kind of, um, you know, brown spice character. Um, and I believe actually Tsar Nikolai grows, uh, has saffron as well. Um, so they have, yeah. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but so to me, this real earthiness is giving such a unique element to the pairing. And, and again, like you said before, uh, watch out for the tannins with this one. That, and, and you know what? But to me, the tannins seem a bit more apparent with this pairing. Mm. You really yeah. get, you know what I'm almost craving? Tell me if this is sacrilege, <laughs> Chef. Um, I'm almost craving like a rare flank steak, just a little piece of flank steak with Ooh. a little dollop of creme fraiche or some sort of, you know, creaminess and then a yeah. 
hit of this on there. Would I be wrong? No, no it sounds interesting. Actually, mm -hmm. I will try it. <laughs> You're gonna go. Next time you come visit. <laughs> <laughs> or even lamb, a little oh, lamb yeah. chop, maybe a lamb chop, a little yeah, lamb. I, I could see with lamb for sure. Ooh, a lollipop lamb, lamb chop with that on it, with a little bit of this would be remarkable. That would be right. really well, amazing. Wait for your next to Ms. Bush. Okay. okay. <laughs> just call it a just call it a Leslie lollipop. Okay, yes. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for on the on the menu. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think so you're right, funny. Leslie. And an older, um, I wouldn't say I'm not sure how far back you could go in terms of age. Like I would let leave that up to the chef, but I think you know, the older, of course, the Cabernet gets, the less uh pronounced the tannin is. And I think the right. more the earthiness really complements what you have here in the beaten saffron. So I have tried this in the past with, like I said, 2005 and also 2009. Um, and both of those were very interesting. And this is, you know, a little bit younger Cabernet, also vintage that has a little more tannin. And you mm -hmm. can see that, how that, that plays out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think actually having a wine that would have even more age on it than this, yes. um, the pairing would be even better because the tannins would be more integrated with the dish. Whereas to me in the last pairing, which was so brilliant, the truffle and the Cabernet Sauvignon, I think the truffle for some reason might have softened those tannins a little bit and given you this, you know, this really silkiness to the tannins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, all right. If we have any comments, Lisa, before we get to our final pairing or... No comments. There was a question though about um, if they're going to be posting photos throughout this um, tasting, what hashtag should they use? And we said hashtag my Jordan table. Um, we always use that. We use it every month because we also do giveaways on our uh, private Facebook group. So anytime you're posting, post hashtag my Jordan table. You never know what you might get from the kitchen. Um, we're always sending little gifts from uh, Todd and Nitsa out to our fans that post uh, photos every month. So Fantastic. All right. So now we're going to pull back in all the wines for the final um, row that we'll be tasting. And I know this is one that is near and dear to your heart, Chef Todd. Um, right. And so we're going back to the Champagne, the Jordan Cuvée. We're going back to the 2014 um, Jordan Chardonnay. And we're keeping the 2014 Jordan Cabernet Sauvignon. So it is, it is a trifecta of fabulousness as we pair it with this final um, row, which is the uh, gold pearl trout row with smoked trout. And let me tell you, when you go up to the farm, they have their own smoking facility. And so you can, you can smell it as you're walking around looking at the sturgeon and all this, they have hydroponic lettuce and all sorts of beautiful things up there. And you can see the smoke coming out of the smokehouse and the, oh my God, oh, it's fabulous. So it just got on my finger. So I'm gonna eat it right off my finger. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Now this one has some, this one has a little bit more, um, uh, you know, pearl shape to it. This one is definitely a bigger row, isn't yeah. it? The salmon row. Yes. And then it, salmon even bigger, bigger yet. But great texture. I'm oh, sorry, this is the white fish. Yeah. Okay. So great texture. So definitely pearly little, mm. pop, 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 yes. crunch, pop, crunch, pop. Mm. And the smokiness here is really balanced. It's, it's just ever so, you know, wafting in and out of, of my little spoon as I sort of, mm. That's fantastic. Yeah, really, it's almost a, a Groblox flavor yeah. to it, the smoke they have on. And you know, when I taste that, I'm gonna go, my mind immediately goes Chardonnay. I don't know why I'm going Chardonnay. So let yeah. me, let me see if I'm right. Again, there's no wrong answer. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and Todd, how do you like to um, serve this particular row since it's really different than everything else we've tried? Yeah, I, I'd use it as a little accents on on main courses, but but usually with a when we do the amuse bouche, so the guests will come in with a champagne, so they have a champagne pairing, and it moves right into the first chardonnay. So it's a nice transitional row, and so I use it quite a bit in the beginning of the meal. I've had it. I've had you use this before when I've been up there and, and it's always remarkable yeah. um, because the smokiness can carry you through from champagnes all the way through yes. white to reds, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, it's like little um, pop rocks, <laughs> 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 like adult expensive pop rocks. Yeah. <laughs> they just pop in your mouth. It's fabulous. Okay. I love it with the Chardonnay. 
let's see. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna suffer. I'm gonna take one for the team here and suffer. Right. And go back to the champagne. Mm. Yeah, and Todd, that smokiness is just so interesting. Like, what is it about the smoke that made you want to use this so often as a garnish or you know? In yeah, for that for that reason, I mean, we use salt. I mean, we use smoke judiciously uh, quite a bit, and the outdoor grill. Because it works with the oak in the in the Chardonnay, you know, you're picking up leazy things with with it. Um, leazy, that's a good word. <laughs> I think you made up a word. So uh, yeah, so so it works really that way, and that's 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 why I, I probably work with this second most to the to the select. And honestly, when you said leazy, my mom, I was drinking the champagne at that point, which, as you said, Lisa has been aged four years on the lease, right? Four years yeah. on the lease. Yep. So you do get this. That I love that just Chardonnay is beautiful with it, but I got to tell you that champagne is knockout with this. Mm, Absolutely yeah. knockout. I haven't gotten to the Cabernet yet, but that is a beauty. And what is it there that you're playing with, Todd? You're playing with the saltiness, the smokiness, the textural component yeah. um, that's giving you all of these. Yeah, all three, and then and then finishes. So, right. yeah. What the the interesting there's interesting finishes to all of them. How long are they going to stay on the palate, and what's the wine effect going to be on your palate? And, yeah. And Jolene, I just saw that comment pop up. Jolene said, I need a moment alone. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yes, you do. I'll tell you. It's uh that is a pairing. That is that's a stunner. Um, that just takes care of Valentine's Day right there. All right. Now I'm gonna just have the last bite of this smokiness with the with the Cabernet as as I ask you guys, uh, Todd and it's of what you know, when you're pairing these two together, what is your thought process? Oh, you can take them. No, I'm. Okay, let me go for it. <laughs> Been a while on this guy. Mm. This is when I do the. Um, I'll do a daring pairing, and uh, I'm not exactly going to recommend it with the cabernet. It's not my favorite thing, but it is interesting. And part of what I do as a chef there is I'm not always. This is it's an exploration of the wines too. So sometimes there's there's learning in that as well. Well, I have to tell you, I just had it with the Cabernet and I'm super surprised talking about daring pairing because what it did for me was it made the fruit of the wine pop mid palate. I got a mm -hmm. lot more of that plummy fruit coming through and it completely mitigated the tannins. It, it, it completely softened all the tannins. I just got this mouthful of fruit and um, I need a moment after that. I'll tell you, that, <laughs> that, was, that was a beauty yeah, in there. Yeah, a little bit, it kind of dissipated. Smoke just and a tannin. Bit. It became like this seamless part that ran through. It never like went, you know, out of out of bounds or got too predominant. No, 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 no. That really is a gorgeous one and worked with all three of those. Um, well, I mean, those are all the caviars. Those are the, the three wines that we've had, the caviars and the rose. And um, do we have any other uh, comments, questions, Lisa, that we can address? Well, um, one was about this, um, the smoked um, trout row that we just tried. Now, Todd, you said it was very near and dear your heart and you were saying you're working on another project with them. Yeah. Um, maybe tell us about what you've been doing and what kind of your, your, your thinking. So what a lot of what we try to do at the winery involves uh, products that are on the land there. And so when we smoke, we smoke with Madrone wood or the oak that's that's all over Jordan. And uh, and while um, and while playing with that and playing with different fishes and different smoking levels and talking with and talking with Otto and with with you as well actually, um, we talked about the text how we like the texture of the trout but the length on the on the uh, salmon and we we're trying to decide between the two if we were going to do a project and then we're, we're considering combining the two, which I've never seen before. So we would get the unctuousness. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Yeah, the salmon with the pop of the trout. That would be wonderful because you've got the same sort of size of the beads, right? You've got that mm -hmm. larger little pearliness to it. And that would be fantastic. Like color contrast. And right. Well, and Lisa, that sort of, you know, brings up the idea of the future. You know, we don't know the future from day to day, do we? We've all learned that very uh, acutely the last year. So what do you see? What have you got going on? What What's exciting happening from all of you at Jordan? Because I think I've made it very clear that uh, Jordan is one of my favorites, always has been, and I'm a, I'm a huge fan. And um, it really is one of the, the best experiences that you can possibly have. 
um, when you go to wine country. So, and the wines, of course, are are world class. So, talk about what's coming up. Great. So, I mean, pivot was certainly the the word of of 2020, and we certainly did pivot. Um, by creating our Paris on the Terrace lunch experience. When we had to close down our indoor tastings, we wanted to do something and Todd Nitz were like, let's have people outside. People can't travel as well. Let's like make them feel like they are in France for a few hours. And so that's a lovely lunch experience that's going to continue um, this summer. And what we did in with the other time is when in the lockdown is like, rather than just kind of hunker down and say, okay, not as many people are visiting. We're not making as much money. Let's like, don't spend. That's what all the businesses tell you to do. John said, no, this is our opportunity to reinvest. So when there aren't as many people here, like there are some things that we were, John wanted to do investment wise that he just decided, nope, I was going to do it five years from now. Let's just do it now. So from last April until now, we've embarked on um, like, four, five, six different renovation projects. Um, we have completely re-landscaped um, the Bacchus Courtyard, um, which NHTSA was instrumental in working with a designer on that. It's a beautiful like French country garden. Now there's a um, fountain, um, it's, the flowers are beautiful, the hummingbirds are there. It's just a lovely place, not only to greet guests, but also NHTSA has like plans to hopefully host little receptions and put tables in there. Oh. And <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Exciting. Um, in the library and cellar room, which have always been kind of the, the mainstays when somebody comes to Jordan for the first time, it's our, our daily place to go and sit and taste. Um, we've completely renovated both of those spaces. They're almost done. Um, they are in the same place, but they are extremely different and both, you know, capturing this beautiful kind of French inspiration, but there's a lot of special parts of each that I know will be love to show you and Claire and the guest services staff or are getting close to being ready to kind of start revealing those spaces to guests, even through private tastings. Um, we won't be reopening those until indoor tastings are allowed, um, but we're giving our members a little bit of sneak peek, hopefully in a month or so on um, the virtual tastings. So if you want to book one of those um, as a rewards member, we can also show you a little behind the scenes um, as we get there. Nitsa and I are kind of working on the finishing, finishing touches with the cellar room now. So hopefully in, a, in maybe two to three weeks, we'll be ready um, to show that. And then, um, we are also the Vista Point, which a lot of um, our guests are familiar with from visiting our on our estate tour. It's our um, highest hilltop, our little glass building up there where you can eat and drink your way across the property. You have these magnificent- And uh, stunning views. Yeah, and views. views from the Dry Creek, Alexander Valley, and the Russian River. Um, Todd is working on a new kind of garden design around that building. Um, Nitsa and I have been um, working on some new um, private tables for guests rather than one communal table since that's not something a lot of people want to do anymore um and todd they're also looking at even like kind of a prep area for him so we can do a little more cooking up there uh because right now they todd cooks everything in the kitchen and then the elves have to bring it up <laughs> the elves, the elves. We, need more elves. <laughs> we need more elves more elves more elves <laughs> But you know, you have the luxury of space there too. You have such a beautiful amount of space that it, it really is ideal, you know, in the coming days for that kind of experiences that you've yeah. got planned. And then right. the other big uh, project, which is the most extensive is a complete renovation of all three of our guest suites. They have not been um, renovated beyond a wallpaper change and a little bit of furniture since um, the late 1970s when John's mother designed them. And of course, we're keep, just like Jordan, we are all about honoring, uh, John's all about honoring his mom and dad's original vision and French sensibilities, um, honoring the old world traditions of France. But, you know, we want to take that to the next level and make this like a five star um, Relay and Chateau experience. So there's all kinds of amazing. That is a huge amount of projects going on, Lisa. I, I was getting thirsty just listening to you. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> in the garden, like there's so many things. You must be exhausted. <laughs> John knows, John loves a building project and they slowed down with hospitality. It's like, well, let's take on another. Let's take on another. Let's just get it all. And so it's That's been, smart. even though like, business has been slow, if you will, like the winery, we're all very busy. 
these great projects going on. So we're, um, you know, we're on track and looking forward to reopening for guests on May 1st. Um, right now, if you go to our website, you'll notice that the visit section doesn't have a lot of information, um, but that's and also our events. That's because we are also spent the last year rebuilding our entire website and our entire loyalty program software to make it much you know, easier, beautiful, come to life for people to shop and decide what they want to buy and book the rewards. And so we're um, planning to relaunch the website April 1st. So there's a lot going on in the next- Can people still, Lisa, get, because I know since this is live on Facebook and I know that, you know, people will be able to go back and see this, can they still be able to buy the packs, the, the caviar pack and the wine pack? Absolutely. So even though the website is going through these changes from a booking perspective, like our online store is open 24 seven right now, we do have the wine and caviar sampler pack available and hidden inside is those bellinis and that creme fraiche. So you have everything that you need except the potatoes, Jolene. I apologize. Oh. Or <laughs> so potato it chips, Jolene, go for the potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's all there. You can, you can get it now on our website. And then we will be hosting another virtual tasting next month while we're still closed. Um, and save the date. That's going to be March 19th. And uh, Todd's going to be touching on um, one of his other favorite things from um, the ocean, um, oysters. Uh, oh. He's got a new mignonette recipe that he's created for everyone. Uh, so um, please stay tuned for that. That's amazing. Well, I think we've, um, do we have, if we have any more comments, I think we've uh, used up a little over our hour, um, but we, I would love to hear some closing thoughts from, from everybody, but and any other comments, Lisa? Um, no other comments. Everyone just said they are, you know, love the pairings. I uh, hope you're enjoying. Everybody's just, I'll tell you, this was, was really um, a, a wonderful treat for me too, because I've, I've had, you know, I've experienced your hospitality so many times, but to actually try these pairings, I haven't done this with you. And, and Cabernet and Truffle Row, let me just tell you right now, <laughs> it's fantastic. So please everybody, you know, make sure that you go back to the website when you, if you're watching this after the fact in order. So, um, all right, Lisa, last words, then I'll end with you, uh, Taranitsa. Um, I just want to say thank you for everyone for joining us. This was really fun for me. I have had the pleasure of trying these pairings once before when we started doing this experiment for this blog post, but um, never with these three vintages. And it was absolutely fun and a great way to kick off a very special um, holiday weekend. So for everybody out there, whether you're at home with a Valentine or you're flying solo, like cheers to you. Cheers to making it through the last uh, 11 months. We're, we're getting close Woo! to we're getting close. Yeah. We're getting close. Cheers. Mm. And Todd and it's the couple on the on the call here. Um, you know, the lovebirds on the call. First, uh, did you have fun today? Was that fun? Yeah, that was my, my first that was... tasting on the, on the Zoom. <laughs> uh, it was our first Zoom <laughs> tasting. Great. It was so much fun. We really enjoyed it. I, I forgot how much I love some of these rows also. So that was really great to try them. And I'm definitely going to try the lamb uh with the uh the the, the beat <laughs> the leslie lollipop you're gonna put yes. that yes. you're gonna put that I'm on the menu forward. i love it i love it so what do you two have planned for valentine's day i hope finishing up the rest of these uh you know caviars and rose and 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 wines yeah well yep we have to finish the bottles and then i think uh we'll probably be doing some homeschooling for a while oh, <laughs> homeschooling is not our favorite <laughs> and then we'll open up another bottle of champagne no <laughs> we were, we're actually going to go to the coast this weekend so that's there you go i we're think gonna, we might too to to the coast. i think that's we might too good. well thank you everybody for joining us thank you for having me um jordan and lisa and the entire team um, and uh, please have a wonderful Valentine's Day and stay safe and sip on, as I always say. Cheers. 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 Happy Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm.